Hello students, welcome to your botany class and uh, maybe uh, many of you may have bought your textbooks or uh, some of you may have not. Anyway, uh, you can just uh, follow on with these recordings and uh, we'll try to go on sequence with the first chapter. And so uh, today I would like to start with the first unit and the first chapter that is uh, the living world. Okay, uh, firstly, uh, let's see what uh, it is about biology. So, the word biology is uh, derived from two Greek words. Bios means life and logos means course of study. So, biology is the branch of science which deals with the study of living organisms, or uh, which is the branch of science which deals with the study of life. And primarily, it consists of two branches, botany and zoology. And botany means pasture, and zoology means zoo, means animal, and logos means course of study. So botany deals with the study of plants, and zoology deals with the study of animals. So uh, uh, when we come to biology, uh, which is the study of living uh, organisms, of living beings, there are certain characteristics, features with which we can define, uh, with, with which we can uh, differentiate living organisms from the non-living things. There are many features, but when it comes to science, some of the important features of living organisms are growth, reproduction, metabolism, and stimuli. So, uh, response to stimuli. Uh, besides this, uh, living organisms, they can uh, organize themselves, then they also can interact with one another, but uh, some of the basic important features of living organisms are growth, reproduction, metabolism, and response to uh, stimuli. So, the first character or the first feature of the living organisms, growth. Growth means an increase in mass or an increase in number. So, this increase in mass refers to the increase in the protoplasmic content of the cell. Increase uh, mass refers to an increase in the protoplasmic content of the cell, and this increase in protoplasmic content of the cell is an intrinsic growth taking place within the cell. And growth, uh, in terms of increase in number, refers to the uh, increase in number of individuals due to cell division. And when we talk about cell division, we primarily want uh, increase in number of individuals or increase in number of cells is because of mitotic division. There are different types of uh, uh, cell division, mito mitosis and meiosis. So mitosis, uh, which takes place in the somatic cells, is responsible for increase in the number of individuals or increase in the number of cells. So increase in the protoplasmic content of the cell or increase in an increase in the number of uh, individuals or increase in the number of uh, cells are uh, characteristic features of growth and in plants, uh, the, uh, the plants continue to grow throughout their lifespan. The plants continue to grow throughout the lifespan uh, and the growth regions are confined to the root tip and shoot tip and uh, within the cambium. So uh, in plants, they continue to grow throughout the lifespan, while in case of the animals, and including we human beings, we are placed with the animals, they, we have only a certain uh, period of growth, while uh, growth in the older forms, it is, refers to the replacement of the older cells by the new cells. So growth refers to increase in mass, uh, protoplasmic content, and increase in the number of cells because of division, cell division. And the next feature of uh, living organisms or living thing is that reproduction. What is reproduction? It is a biological process by which uh, parents give birth or give rise to young ones or offspring or progeny. So uh, reproduction is one of the most important features of uh, characteristic feature of living organisms and it is because of reproduction with which the race, the living organisms, they are able to perpetuate the race or the living organisms, they are able to perpetuate the species. So there are different kinds of reproduction, asexual and sexual reproduction. So asexual takes place, reproduction takes place by means of spores, fragmentation, budding, etc. While sexual reproduction takes place by means of fusion of gametes, male and female gametes, egg and the sperm. So uh, the next feature is the uh, metabolism. What is metabolism? It is a sum total of all the chemical reactions taking place inside the body of organisms. 
the body of living organisms, they are made of chemicals, and during the process of metabolism, uh, one form is changed into the other. And it consists of anabolism, which refers to the building up of materials, and catabolism, which refers to the breaking down of uh, materials. Uh, one of the examples of anabolism, building up of materials, is uh, photosynthesis taking place in plants. They are, uh, due to the process of photosynthesis, the plants are able to synthesize carbohydrate or sugar from uh, water and carbon dioxide. And in the process of uh, catabolism, breaking down, the best example is uh, during respiration. During the process of respiration, we inhale in the oxygen, which is responsible for breaking down the food that we take and thereby releasing energy. So metabolism refers to the sum total of all the chemical reactions taking place within the body of an organism and non-living things, they do not metabolize, they do not, uh, um, there is no anabolism, there is no catabolism, while it is only the living organisms which, under, uh, which, ex uh, which perform metabolism or which perform anabolism and catabolism. The next feature is a uh, response to stimuli. So uh, these features, um, living organisms, we are conscious of ourselves. We are able to sense our environment with our sense organs, and we are able to respond uh, accordingly. So uh, in plants, uh, can the plants can respond to the environmental factors like light, temperature, humidity, water, and accordingly, they can respond. During the process of uh, transpiration, when uh, the plants can sense the environment, uh, sense the atmosphere uh, in relation to the light, humidity, or water, and accordingly, they can increase the rate of transpiration, they can increase the rate of losing water, or they can reduce the rate of transpiration by restricting the loss of water. So also, even uh, photoperiodism, the plants respond to light by growing towards light, that is, um, light-loving plants, and some plants, they uh, respond to the light by moving away from it. They grow in the sheds. So also with the animals, they can sense the environment, they can sense the uh, biofactors uh, surrounding the, uh, them, and then respond accordingly. So these are some of the important features of living organisms with which we can differentiate it from uh, non-living things. So. Um, Besides this, as I've said, uh, living organisms, they can interact among themselves and they also can uh, f form organization. And uh, uh, there are many more as you can think we can add to that also. So uh, biology, as we have discussed, uh, which is concerned with the study of life, it's uh, the story of evolution. It's a story of uh, living things as which has resulted as a result of uh, evolution. And uh, we know that uh, life the, uh, it has been 3 billion years. Life that exists now, the different kinds of plants, the different kinds of animals, the different kinds of microbes that exist now is a result of 3 billion years of evolution. And it's said that um, there are about 1.7 to 1.8 millions of plants or millions of organisms that are being identified and they are in existence. This is in existence, but besides this, there are many uh, uh, organisms. There are many plants, there are many animals, and there are many organisms, microbes, which have gone into extinction. They have gone into extinction, and some of them, a fraction of it is preserved only in the form of fossils. But uh, fossils are only a fraction of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the plants and animals or the organisms that have gone into extinction. So uh, it is said that uh, there are about 1.7 to 1.8 millions of uh, plants, animals, and microorganisms that are in existence today. And so uh, it is not possible to study these 1.7 to 1.8 millions of uh, living organisms one by one. It's not possible to study them individually until unless names have been assigned to them, until unless we refer to them as uh, names. We cannot just give them codes or numbers and study them. It's impossible. So in order to make the study more convenient um, and more friendly to us, these uh, living organisms, they have been given specific names. Names are given to each and every individual, individual living organisms. And that process of giving name to living organism is known as nomenclature. The process of giving names to organisms is known as nomenclature and 
uh, accordingly, each and every living organism has got a name, a local name, and, according, uh, and we know that we can refer to a particular uh, animal in our local dialect or in vernacular names. Uh, for example, cat may be referred to as uh, you know, two or more names according to their uh, local names or uh, vernacular names. So uh, living organisms, a particular living organism, even though it has been assigned names, it can vary from place to place depending upon the type of the people living in a particular place. Cat, for example, may be known as cat in English, but it may be called as a different name in some other countries again. Or for that matter, uh, we may call it uh, uh, a country or a state which is multilingual, we will refer a cat with different names again. So uh, when we look into this, it can create a lot of confusion even with one particular uh, animal or one particular organism or with one particular plant. So in order to avoid the confusion and in order to standardize uh, the naming of uh, uh, living organisms, the system of scientific names are being given to, scientific names are being given to animals, uh, given to plants and microbes in order to standardize the name and avoid the confusion of having many names or local names. And that is known as binomial uh, nomenclature. And so, according to this binomial nomenclature, uh, scientific name, or uh, the scientific name of a plant or an animal or a microbe consists of two words. For example, let's take the example of human beings. We scientifically, or scientific name of homo, uh, human beings is known as homo sapiens. And it consists of two components, uh, homo and sapiens. And so this, um, since it consists of two uh, components, it is known as binomial. Bi means two and nomial, uh, nomenclature. So a scientific name consisting of two words or two components is, uh, is known as uh, binomial nomenclature of naming of plants or animals or microbes. And the first name is the generic or gener uh, generic name and the second is the specific or species name or the specific epithet. So uh, this binomial naming of plants, binomial nomenclature has to follow certain rules uh, and these rules, are, uh, these rules are, one is that the first word is the genus or the generic name and the second is the specific epithet or the species. And the first letter of the genus begins with capital letter. So uh, name homo sapiens, so homo h begins with capital letter and the second and the first letter of the second word that is sapiens begins with small letter. So s sapiens s uh, begins with small letter and these names are generally in Latin. The scientific names are generally in Latin or if they have been obtained from other uh, language uh, they have to be Latinized again. So uh, all the scientific names are in Latin. So Homo sapiens, Homo means the generic, the, the generic name, and sapiens is the specific epithet. And Homo H begins with uh, Homo H begins with capital letter, and sapiens as with a uh, small letter. And it is separately underlined when they are handwritten. When it is when the scientific names are written with hands, they are separately underlined. While when they are printed, then they have to be printed in italics. So uh, these are certain rules. And another is that the name of the author or the name of the scientist who first gave the uh, scientific name is put at the end of the uh, name. And it's given in Latin. Uh, it's given in bracket, or you can just simply write it lin lineus, or for example, lin or lineus. So, these are certain rules while we follow during uh, the scientific naming of uh, plants, animals, and microbes. And this system is known as bi binomial system of nomenclature. So uh, this uh, naming of plants uh, or be any kind of organisms, it is not uh, possible until and unless the characters, characteristic feature of an organism is uh, well studied, it's identified. So this, uh, Studying of the uh, features or the characters and getting information for a particular organism and subsequently naming them is known as identification. So each and every living organism, they have a specific uh, characters with which we can identify it. Certain groups of organisms, um, they will have a specific uh, characters with which we can differentiate it from uh, the 
other group of organisms. For example, we can differentiate uh, the identifying character of mammals is that they have we have external ears and we have a hairy body. So uh, because of that, we can start naming. So identification is a prerequisite for nomenclature. And as we uh, as uh, the organisms are being identified. Uh, uh, as the characters are being studied and the information are being gathered and the uh, characters are being given out, we can um, find out that many, there are many organisms which can uh, uh, which exhibit similarities and differences. So, depending upon the similarities and differences, organisms which exhibit simil uh, differences or which exhibit similar characters, they can be placed in one group, and the organisms which uh, they exhibit again another similar group or uh, another characters or similar characters they can place in another group again. So that grouping of organisms basing on the similarities or basing on the resemblances and differences is also known, is known as classification. So depending upon the uh, differences and uh, similarities, Organisms are classified and accordingly there are three systems of classification, artificial system of classification and natural system of classification then phylogenetic system of classification. So these are the three systems of classification and these three uh, types of classification artificial takes place on the uh, easily observable characters, natural takes place uh, Classification is based on the natural characters, while phylogenetic is based on the uh, evolutionary relationship between the organisms. So these are the three types of classification, and the branch of biology which deals with naming of plants or animals, which deals with the identification, and which deals even with the classification of plants or organisms. That whole branch of biology is known as taxo, taxo no. Me. So, the branch of biology which deals with nomenclature, which deals with identification, which deals with classification of living organisms is known as taxonomy. And taxonomy uh, is derived from two Greek words. Taxis means uh, uh, classified arranging and nomos means a course of study. So, this uh, taxonomy which deals with nomenclature, which deals with identification and which, deals, which covers up the whole aspects it is of great importance, taxonomical studies is of great importance in agriculture, in industry, in public health, and even in scientific studies. So when, uh, when we say about uh, classification, uh, one thing we can uh, put it up to is with, we can refer it to the arrangements of books in a library. So like the books are arranged according to the author or according to the subjects. So accordingly, uh, living organisms are classified and all the organisms that are in existence today, they are placed in one group or the other, uh, they are placed in one, uh, one uh, they are placed in one category or the other depending, following either the artificial system of classification or following either the natural system of classification or following either the phylogenetic system of classification. So with this, I would like to wind up today's class and in the next class, we can go detail what are the aids that can be used for this classification. Thank you.